Hey there, it's been a minute. I'm Brandon, and this is Gearist. Well guys, it's been quite a while since we've had a review on Gearist. You may have seen our new show that we're putting out, uh, Grit by Gearist. You can find it on Spotify, all of those things. But this is our first review back, and for that, I thought that we'd have a very, very special shoe that a lot of people have been waiting for. And that is the Speed Goat, number five, from Hoka. So the last review that I wrote for Hoka was actually for the Speed Goat number two. Now, for all the things that have changed in my life personally, for better, for worse, and between all of those things since the last time we spoke in a review setting, the Hoka Speed Goat has been one of those constant things that I find really reassuring. So after the initial kind of rocky start, no pun intended, with the OG Hoka Speed Goat, Hoka One One Speed Goat number one, this shoe and actually the previous versions of this shoe really made some great strides in fixing the things that were wrong with that shoe. Even though it was really a bounding and very fun ride of a shoe, the fit did not work for my foot at all and therefore it kind of ruined it for me. But Number two, the last shoe that was in the Speed Goat line the by Hoka that we reviewed, they fixed so many of those things and it was really such a fun shoe. Construction was better, the fit was better, it handled a variety of terrain. And today, in the Speed Goat number five, we're gonna see if a lot of those things have carried over into this latest iteration. If you've been paying any attention and if you're a Hoka fan to begin with, you will know that the Speed Goat number five is one of the most anticipated and most sought after shoes to come out in quite some time. So without any further ado, let's start by talking about the outsole. Being that the Speed Goat 5 from Hoka is a new shoe from the ground up, the first thing that we're gonna look at is that part that goes to the ground, and that is the outsole which is built with Vibra Mega Grip with traction lug. Now the Vibra Mega Grip with traction lug is not just the rubber that we're seeing right here, but it's actually the shape and the design of the lugs themselves. On each one of these you can see kind of how it's laid out in this sort of a kind of a, pl a placed apart chevron package with some cutouts to save weight and things like that. But what we're really looking at is those micro features that appear on the lugs. It might be a little bit hard to see in this. So here's a picture right here so you can see some of those micro features up close. But what does this mean for you as a runner? What it really means is that there's increased surface area by all those small features in each lug without increasing the overall weight of the shoe. It's actually a good savings and at the same time as both of those things are accomplished it works to really provide a lot of traction. Something that you would find in a much deeper and maybe even a more beefy lug while not adding the weight of such a thing. Arranged in clusters in the forefoot up here, a little bit right here in the heel, and then mostly around the perimeter of the shoe, we can see that the Speed Goat 5 actually saves some weight by having quite a few cutouts in these areas, these yellow areas that we can see where it's simply exposed foam. This is also gonna give it the ability to adapt to a variety of terrain, both smooth, rocky, technical, all of those things in between. Being that I live in the front range of Colorado in Boulder County here, a lot of the trails that I'm running are gonna be those dry dusty and frequently rocky trails with a little bit of kind of high alpine forest mixed in there. On hard trail, the grip of the outsole here, the Vibra Mega Grip with traction lug, really held its own. It did a spectacular job in holding up to rocks and all those things. When the trail tipped up, kind of got a little bit more steep, one of the interesting things that I have often found particularly when it is really, really hard, whether that's hard packed ground or hard rocks that are underfoot, what you'll notice is that those, the kind of dusty dirt that gets under your foot, it can actually form like, almost like a bunch of ball bearings that are under your foot and you can actually slide. What I found was that this did a fantastic job in really, really holding the terrain. And I have to think that that is part of the adaptation of that traction lug setup that this shoe has. I will say that honestly, this is one of the best traction shoes, especially considering it's only a five millimeter deep lug that I have ever run in. Now, as we leave the outsole here, we go to the midsole of the Speed Goat number five. Now, what I ran in the OG Speed Goat right here, right? The Speed Goat number one, the biggest thing that I fell in love with in this shoe was actually the midsole. It was really, really fun. It was very bounding. All of those things that I mentioned earlier. The CMEVA midsole foam of that shoe was really, really a lot of fun. It didn't have me feeling like I was sinking down into kind of some squishy mess. In the Speed Goat 5, the CMEVA phone that is actually brought in there is really one that 
has a nice middle ground. If you're somebody who's looking for a cushioned ride, which part of the reason that people go for Hoka some of the time is because they look super cushioned, you're gonna find some of that cushion. You're gonna find a nice soft underfoot feel. If you're somebody who wants more response, you want more of that ground feel, believe it or not, despite its overall stack height, you're going to see actually quite a bit of that feel underfoot. A part of the cushioning you're gonna feel in that is obviously based on the 38 millimeter in the heel, 34 millimeter in the forefoot for an overall drop of four millimeters millimeters in the shoe. Simply the material is going to provide some of that cushioning. But again, that's what tends to deaden ground feel for some people, but it wasn't something that I noticed in this shoe. As with previous versions of this shoe and other Hoka models, we see that late stage meta rocker, right? So that rocker shape of the foot there, of the shoe rather, and that is part of what's going to have that smooth ride, the ride which we'll talk about in just a second. I'd also add that the midsole foam, it, it comes up quite a bit. So really where your foot is sitting is kind of down here. Now, people that haven't run in Hoka shoes before may look at it and go, oh my God, I'm going to break an ankle. And quite frankly, when I first saw Hoka coming out years ago, that's one of the things that I saw. But apart from the fact that this comes up, provides a little more of that stable feeling, there's also the fact that it's a very wide base. We can see the wide base of the shoe and that midsole being spread out below the foot. The other thing is that with all this material, you would think that it would be heavy. And I really don't feel that way. I don't feel like based on the construction that it really could lose a ton of weight in the midsole material. And that's really great. I mean, this is something where a lot of Hoka fans who have been running in them for years now, myself and included, really looked at the shoe, finding it much more comfortable in its own skin as it goes on and on. And it's really just a continuation of really great research and development based around actual feedback from runners rather than just a bunch of designers sitting in front of a CAD program cranking out running shoes. And since I mentioned weight just a second ago, in this men's size 11, it comes in at 11 ounces, or in a men's size 9, 9.8 ounces. And in a women's size 8, around 8.5 eight ounces. As we move from the midsole of the Speedgo 5 into the upper of this guy, what we're greeted with is a really well thought out double jacquard mesh, which is actually kind of getting rid of some of the hot spots and some of the overlays and some of the problem areas of previous versions of this shoe, while also being able to incorporate recycled materials. The only overlays that remain on the upper here are this bit of a TPU overlay on the, the toe cap here to protect from kicking that one stick or rock that's only this far off the ground, but somehow your foot magically is able to find it and bust your face on the ground. And and also a little bit of this heavier mesh kind of backing around the heel counter here, which helps to both reinforce the heel cup and also kind of give a good shape and hold into that area. The material itself of the double card mesh on the top has very little stretch to it, which is kind of good because if it had a ton of stretch, you would find it becoming a little bit swimmy and it does a good job of avoiding that. Where you are going to find the ability of the shoe to adapt to the foot, whether it's a wide foot or a more narrow foot, is going to be really beginning right here in what's called the vamp, right above and just kind of over top of the toes there, where we see kind of a neoprene-ish area, and you can see that it's a little bit of stretch, and that's gonna allow that foot to sit in there, have a little bit of splay without being overly swimmy. Now, one part of the upper of this guy that we cannot go without mentioning, and a lot of people have raved about it in some other places that I've read people reviewing the shoe, the Speed Goat 5 here, is this heel pull tab. Now. In previous versions of this shoe, including the Speed Goat one, we can see right here there's a bit more of a traditional heel pull tab. And this, what Hoka has opted for, is this piece of kind of extended material, including the foam that's in there, past the back of the shoe. Well, I will say that first and foremost, this is a very good and well-designed, well-thought-out pull tab. And I know that seems like a weird thing, but honestly, some of the loops are not made for my... I guess chubby fingers? I don't really know. It's just very difficult to get them in there. This, you just reach down, grab, and pull. Now, I've seen some people saying that this is a very new thing. Uh, it's it's really not. I mean, this is the one of the original Raven Boosts by Adidas, and you can see a very similar thing back here. I really liked these things because they get away from kind of extra things in the way, an extra loop that you have to put your finger into, an extra design of those things. I always think that less is more, or more integration naturally into the shoe is a good job, and Hoka's done a spectacular job with that here. Now, the other thing that this does is it keeps this uh, bar, this basically is part of the collar, the back part there, away from the Achilles. I don't really have issues with abrasion on the Achilles very much. It's actually quite seldom that that pops up with me. But for some people where they are going to find blistering in that area, this does a good job of kind of funneling away 
from the foot, if you will. One of the other advantages that I've heard people talk about, including one of our reviewers, Aaron, he actually said that uh, some people have mentioned that this allows for more debris to get into the shoe. I have to say that I didn't notice that. I certainly experienced like some things getting in there, but I mean, all things considered, not really any more or any less than any other shoe. Uh, I guess maybe that's the way that I run in particular. If you're experiencing that, I'd love to hear. Please leave a comment down below. The durability of this is really, really great. I've got probably 75 or 80 miles on this shoe. It's been fantastic in holding up to whatever I throw at it. And as we'll talk about the fit in a moment, the mesh up top not being overly stretchy does a good job of holding that foot in place, especially as you come back here into the collar you would think with such an open design that you might feel a little more shifting, but you really don't. Now, as we move into the fit of this guy, the first thing that I will say, as I try to say in all reviews about shoes or about clothing or whatever it is, I try to give you guys a good perspective on what it is relative to my foot. I have a very average foot. It's not wide, it's not narrow. It's everything that you would expect in an average foot, not a high arch and a low arch, just dead on even. Now, I certainly have tastes and you know I can like a little more room in the toe box, so on and so forth. But what I also try to say is, what is the application of the shoe? If it's a road shoe, it doesn't need to have as much kind of hold in place as some trail shoes do. In this case, we're gonna talk about exactly what this shoe, which is meant for a wide variety of terrain, how that functions on my very average foot. First, the sizing. I wear a men's size 11. This is right where it should be. I didn't feel like I had to go larger or smaller. If you're one of those people that kind of falls in the cracks and you found yourself in a particular size in Hoka in the past, I would say that you're probably good to just go with whatever size you're used to. As far as width, I found it right on a classic D width. Typically speaking, a men's running shoe is gonna come in a standard D width and a women's gonna be in a standard B width. This guy being in a D width fit my very average foot exactly where I would think that it would be. And I will also say again that relative to the toe box, this kind of neoprene-ish area right on top of the vamp there, it, well, the vamp itself, it does a good job of allowing kind of some of that toe splay. I will say, as with many, 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 many shoes, <laughs> I would love a couple millimeters more right out here on the lateral side, just above the little toe to allow for kind of a little bit more foot shape. That is kind of a dangerous area for some places. And in the past, there have certainly been shoes that we've tried out that have found themselves with over overly huge amounts of room in that area as opposed to being truly foot shaped. However, if you are somebody who's got a wide foot, just be aware that you can get this in a 2E, double E width, which is gonna be able to allow a little bit more forgiveness of uh, that wide foot. And for women, by the way, if you have a wide foot, try going into the D of a men's and the transition there, if you are like a women's size nine, that's gonna be a men's seven and a half. So there's a one and a half size transition downward. Moving into the midfoot of the shoe, I I will say that uh, right kind of below the very well-constructed tongue, it's not overly patty, it's not something that's heavy or adding weight or just kind of unnecessary material. I felt like the midfoot did a very good job of holding my foot in place. There's a bit of banding, kind of some attachment, almost a gusset, uh, if you will, below the tongue, which is gonna wrap around that foot and hold it in place. And then as we move into the heel cup, I felt like my foot was nicely held in there. Again, this kind of shape, I, I've seen where some people feel like their foot's just gonna pop out. It did not feel like that at all, and I am not somebody who hammers down on those laces. Now, as we start to talk about the ride, earlier I mentioned the variety of terrain that this shoe can handle. And that's one of the things that I will stand by. On the on the typically very rocky Colorado terrain that I talk about, I go up to Hall Ranch or Picture Rock or Heil Ranch or all these places that I go here in Boulder County in the Front Range of Colorado more broadly. This does a very good job. And one of the things that I should mention, I didn't mention in the midsole section, is that there is no rock plate in this shoe. Part of that reason is because there's enough material to basically deaden the sharpness of any rock that's gonna be underfoot or poking through. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that, but let's face facts. If you've got a rock sharp and pointed enough and you step straight on that right under the ball of the foot, for instance, you're probably gonna feel that through a rock plate anyway, unless it's anything shy of like a carbon plate. Now talking about the lugs again in that grip on loose soil, I found this lug design to be very, very good. It held the ground really well, whether that's kind of a more peaty and dirty uh, material underfoot or whether it's that more dusty and rocky terrain. It's very adaptable. And I really, really like that because it's gonna take somebody who is running back east, like our guy Aaron or myself that's here in Colorado and be able to give you a shoe that is gonna 
basically take whatever you throw at it. I will admit that I did not run in anything muddy. Here in Colorado, we can get some very sticky mud. Um, I would like to think that the meta rocker shape of this would help to shed some of that mud, and it probably does. Uh, but the mud that we get here can be very, very sticky and cake up quickly. I, I try not to be on trails too much on those days because it's both frustrating to me and bad for the trails. And one of the things that a lot of people bring up who've never run in a Hoka before is, oh my God, look how high it is off the ground. Look how much material there is in the foot. I'm gonna break an ankle. And as I mentioned earlier, I thought that when I first saw Hokas, in this shoe, you do not feel like that. It is not something that you even notice. You put it on and it's just like any other running shoe. In fact, it feels like even a more minimal shoe in some places because of that really enhanced ground feel and the way that it works with your foot more naturally. As I mentioned earlier, the Speed Goat 1, one of the things I fell in love with this was that bounding feel, that really just kind of exciting and very responsive, here we go and bouncing off of everything feel. With this, the essence of that ride, that really, that drive to bound and bounce and run up trails and all round trails and all these different things, it's still there, but it's a much more refined feel. And I actually like that a lot. It's something that's going to invite you to kind of take it back a notch and go for longer miles and something that's not going to drive you to feel like you have to just go leaping around the trails. Since its genesis, the Hoka Speed Goat 1 has been one of those shoes which a lot of people have gone to. Whether it's somebody looking to enhance or extend their running career as it were, or whether it's somebody who's really looking to kind of lock down some of those precious KOMs on Strava. This shoe is a fantastic evolution from the Speed Goat 4, and as I mentioned earlier, it's one of those things where the people at Hoka, the designers, have listened to real runners, the everyday average runner, not just the elites, when building a shoe that's gonna to cater to such a wide variety of people in a high performance way. The excellent grip, the superb ride, and the fantastic upper of this shoe is gonna make the Speed Goat 5 one of those that's kind of gonna be a Swiss Army trail shoe for many runners out there. At $155, it's really not poorly priced, to be very honest with you. Although let's face facts, with the current inflation, that means about $124. And again, one of the interesting things about this is the bang for your buck aspect of this shoe. It's gonna be something you can take on that smooth groove single track, or you can take on very, very rocky trail, which I have done both of. For me, I rotate through a lot of shoes, but I have to say, as I move into big miles with some things that I've got coming up in about a month here, this is one of the shoes that is going to be at the top of my list for throwing down some big trail miles. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for continuing to subscribe to Garrist. If you if you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, all of those things. We'd love to hear your comments. Please say hey if it's been a while and you've missed us. And if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us on socials or right here in the comments below this video. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and please look out for a lot more content coming your way as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Get out there, get after it, and I'll see you next time.